Hi everybody, this is Dr. A. In this video on chemistry panels, we are going to talk about the basic metabolic panel, also known as the BMP. Okay, so the basic metabolic panel is a commonly ordered chemistry panel that checks electrolytes, glucose, renal function, and calcium. Uh, the components of it are the sodium potassium chloride, the total CO2, um, sometimes listed as bicarb, uh, the glucose, the blood urea nitrogen, sometimes listed as urea nitrogen or BUN. In some countries, just measure urea and creatinine and calcium. So the order in which these are listed is going to vary on your um, instruments. It varies based on um, how it's built by your institution in the lab information system and in, in the electronic health record. But all of these components will be there. It's just how the display just changes. All right, the sample requirements. We need non-hemolyzed plasma in uh, usually a lithium heparin, so a green top, or serum. Uh, the light green tops also work, and uh, the light green um, have a serum separator in them, and then um, these gold tops <clears throat> well, the serum separators are good, but they, they will yield serum. And of course, you have to wait till they have completely clotted before you spin them down. So if you need um, a faster turnaround, you might want to go with lithium heparin. So let's talk about the electrolytes and the glucose. So your sodium and chloride, those values tend to go together because whatever sodium does, chloride does. Um, so usually we're mostly concerned about them being low. Um, and it can be low if there are fluid and electrolytes that are lost from uh, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. That's going to be the most common cause. So it helps to check hydration and electrolyte status. Obviously, these two can also be, they could be elevated. Uh, and those are, you know, this is more complicated in, in different uh, causes. And I have uh, more in-depth videos about electrolytes that you can go see uh, and search for on my channel. The potassium can also be low if there are fluid and electrolytes that are lost from nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Uh, and the concern with potassium is any greatly increased or greatly decreased levels can cause cardiac abnormalities. And so uh, that's quite concerning. The total CO2 uh, is sometimes listed as bicarbonate. And it relates to acid-base balance. And it is approximately equivalent to the bicarbonate on the ABG. Uh, severe nausea, vomiting, and, and diarrhea can also decrease this one from the loss of alkaline fluids from the digestive tract. There are other things that can uh, you know, shift the bicarb, such as um, acid-base imbalances, uh, metabolic acidosis, other than the loss of bicarb. Um, and so uh, increase can be in COPD and other things. Um, glucose checks for the levels of glucose in the blood, which is a sugar, which gives you uh, your cells energy. You use glucose to make ATP. And uh, we're concerned about levels either being too low and the patient would have hypoglycemia or too high and then you're then potentially looking at diabetes. And then uh, the renal function and calcium part. So the blood urea, nitrogen, and the creatinine are part of the renal function. Um, and the blood urea nitrogen measures the waste of protein metabolism. So urea is um, a waste product of protein metabolism. Uh, and it's usually increased in renal diseases, and then it can be increased in dehydration. Also increased if you eat a lot of protein, like a very, very high protein diet. The BUN only measures the nitrogen content of urea whose molecular weight is 28. Some countries will measure urea levels, which is a whole molecule, and its molecular weight is 60. So if you ever had to do the conversion back and forth, urea is approximately twice uh, the level of that of BUN because uh, 60 divided by 28 is 2.14. So like if you had a BUN of 10, your urea level would be 21.14, uh, 21.4, sorry. Uh, milligrams per deciliter. That's usually um, the you know, measurement unit for blood urea and nitrogen. Um, creatinine measures the waste product of muscle metabolism as creatine. So um, creatine is involved, this molecule involved 
in energy production into muscles. So um, with creatine kinase, uh, creatine phosphate helps to um, make ATP or convert, you know, when it from ATP go into ADP. So it's involved in that portion of um, the metabolism of muscle and its production is constant throughout the day and is related to muscle mass. Um, and we're mostly concerned about this one being increased in renal diseases, uh, but not usually in dehydration. So if you think about it, they're both waste products and the kidneys are supposed to filter out waste. And if the kidneys are not good at filtering out waste, then both the blood urine and nitrogen and the creatinine might be increased. Um, so um, the creatinine though doesn't shift with dehydration the way the BUN does. And then calcium, has a role in bone metabolism, of course, bone strength, um, but also in muscle contraction, including the heart. It's really important for heart function, uh, but also it has many other cellular functions. So obviously we are concerned if it is too low, um, but if it's too high, sometimes it could indicate potential cancers or other hormonal uh, imbalances uh, as far as calcium metabolism is concerned. All right. So that's my quick wrap up on the BMP, the basic metabolic panel. Thanks for tuning in.